justify this. The sun, in all its mesmerizing splendor. Our light, our lives. Everything we do is controlled by the sun, depends on it. And more than that, it's the Greek god Helios driving his chariot across the sky. The Egyptian god Ra, reborn every day. The summer solstice sun rising at Stonehenge. For millions of years, this was as close as it got to staring into the face of God. 150 million kilometers from home, a 20-year journey by plane. Switch it off, and it's so far away, we wouldn't know about it for a whole eight minutes. It's so big, you could fit a million Earths inside it. So heavy, its gravity controls the entire solar system. But who needs numbers? We've got the real thing. We see it every day. A familiar face in our sky. Up close, it's unrecognizable. A turbulent sea of incandescent gas. The thermometer rises to over 5,000 degrees. Down in the core, it's got to be tens of millions of degrees. Hot enough to trigger a nuclear reaction, turning millions of tons of matter into energy every second. More than all the energy ever made by mankind. Back home, we see this energy as light, feel it as heat. But up close, there's nothing comforting about the sun. It's so full of electrical and magnetic activity, it's bursting out in these huge incandescent gas loops called prominences. Each one releasing more energy than 10 million volcanoes. You could get the Earth through one of these loops and still have tens of thousands of kilometers to spare. And where they burst through, it's exposing the cooler layers below, making sunspots. They're a fraction cooler than their surroundings. It's why they look black, but they're still hotter than anything on Earth. And they're massive, too. Some of these are at least 50,000 kilometers across. A solar flare. A superheated stream of electrified gas blasting deadly radiation out into space. But one day, all this will stop. The sun's fuel will be spent. When it dies, that'll be it for the Earth as well. This God creates life and destroys it, demands we keep our distance. This comet has strayed too close. It's being boiled away by the sun's heat creating a tail that stretches for millions of kilometers. It's freezing in here. There's no doubt where this comet's come from. The icy wastes of deep space. But look at all this steam, the geysers and dust. It's the sun again, melting the comet's frozen heart. A kind of vast, dirty snowball, covered in grimy tar. Tiny grains of what looks like organic material, 
preserved on ice since well, who knows when maybe even the beginning of the solar system say a comet like this crashed into the young earth billions of years ago maybe it delivered organic material and water the raw ingredients of life it may have even sown the seeds of life on earth that evolved into you and me <laughs> But say it crashed into the Earth now. Think of the dinosaurs, wiped out by a comet or asteroid strike. It's only a question of time. Eventually, one day, unless we can find a way to protect ourselves, we'll go the way of the dinosaurs. The Earth is safe. For now. But if life on Earth was obliterated, We'd be stuck out here, homeless, adrift in a hostile universe. We'd need to find another home. Among the millions, billions of planets, there must be one that's not too hot, not too cold, with air, sunlight, water, where, like Goldilocks, we could comfortably live. The Red Planet. Unmistakably, Mars. For centuries, we've looked to Mars for company, for signs of life. Somewhere down there could be extraterrestrial life. But are we ready to find it? Ready to rewrite the history books, to tear up the science books, to turn our world upside down. What happens next could change everything. More than any other planet, Mars captures our imagination. Think of sci-fi films, comics, what follows? Martians. It's all just fiction, right? But what if there really is something here? If there is, it's living on a dead planet. The processes that make Earth habitable shut down hundreds of millions of years ago here. Red and dead. Mars is a giant fossil. Something's alive. A dust devil. A big one. Bigger than the biggest tornadoes back on Earth. There's wind here. And where there's wind, there's air. Air that could sustain extraterrestrial life. But it's too thin for us to breathe. Full of choking carbon dioxide. There's nothing to protect Mars from the sun's ultraviolet rays. And it's cold. As low as minus 80 degrees, freezing water in the ground, at the poles, and even in the atmosphere, as snow. It's hard to believe anything could live here. But on Earth, there are creatures that survive in extreme cold, heat, and even in the deepest ocean trenches. It's as though life is a virus. It adapts, spreads. Maybe we're carrying a virus of life across the universe right now. Even in the most extreme conditions, life usually finds a way. But on a dead planet, with no geological activity to replenish the minerals and nutrients in its soil, no heat to melt its frozen water, and all this dust, it's hard to see where we're going. 